Okay, so welcome back. Um, in today's lecture, we're going to um, use the most basic formulation of what's called stochastic gradient uh, descent or gradient descent um, to solve the most basic formulation of a machine learning model that I can think of that uses the derivative. So the ideas that, that we're going to cover today are the simplest forms of the ideas that are used for these things called deep neural networks and a lot of other machine learning techniques. Um, but realistically, the ideas are the same. It's just the examples that we're doing are going to be very simple. Okay. So before we get to the actual problem at hand, um, we have to recall what we did last time. So last time um, we learned about um, so I guess last time we uh, let's say we learned to um, find. Um, approximate solutions to the problem of minimizing over variables x some differentiable function of x. And by approximate solution, I mean that. Um, this problem here technically means minimum among all possible x. But in practice, we can only find like local solutions to this problem, like local optimal values. For example, like if it's a parabola, we can solve it. We can find the minimum, right? But sometimes the best that we can ever hope for is like finding like a local minimum where maybe a global minimum is kind of further away. But local minimums we can find so long as the function is differentiable and continuous. And how did we do that? We did that with what's called gradient descent. And the term gradient um, is the term, it's like the derivative and the gradient are the same thing. It just happens to be that the derivative is um, with respect to a function of one variable. The generalized version of this when the function has several variables is called the gradient, but they're the same thing. And how does gradient descent work? Well, you start with an initial guess, x1, as a guess, and then you iterate the following update rule. xn plus 1 is equal to xn minus a learning rate alpha times the derivative a, xn. Okay, so basically we make a guess and then we alter our guess by going in the opposite direction of the derivative at that point, because that's always going to go downhill on the function. Okay, now, okay, um, we even programmed this, right? And the idea is simple, but how is this like related to machine learning? Well, it turns out that this is the primary tool for solving or finding um, the appropriate weights for these things called deep neural networks. Um, and to illustrate that, we're going to um, start with the problem of regression. Okay, so the problem at hand. And I'll explain what linear regression is in a moment.
And I think that we'll do it with like a toy example. So suppose that we're given data and this data consists of, um, each data point is like a patient, okay? So each data point is like a patient and um, we're measuring maybe like, um, say like uh, cholesterol levels or something and then observing something like blood pressure, okay? And we've seen like four patients. Let's make it easy, three patients, okay? So we have some data. And the data consists of two pools, like an X measurement and a Y measurement. So um, cholesterol level, and then we observe uh, blood pressure or something, okay? So I'm just gonna make up some numbers here. They're not realistic, I'm just making them up. But like patient one has measured a blood pressure of like, uh, not blood pressure, um, what was I saying, like cholesterol level or something, like 0 0.85. And then we observe a blood pressure of like 1.2. So that was like patient one. And then our second patient, maybe we, we observe like, um, 1.3 for the cholesterol level, and then we observe a blood pressure of like um, 2.4. And then we also observe um, a third patient, and it's like 1.3. Uh, eight maybe is our observed cholesterol level and then our measured cholesterol level and we observe a blood pressure of like um, maybe uh, 2.1 okay so these are values that we this is data that we've collected and the input variables, so like the inputs, right? We'll call that data like X. And that is um, your features. All right, so we like measure something that we measure some feature of the person, i.e. their cholesterol level, made up again. And then we observe the labels corresponding for those, um, the, those features. So I'll call it maybe like Y. So these would be uh, the labels, the true labels. Okay, so we have features and labels that we've collected. All right, now this data, we can plot for every X, there's a Y, right? This person is paired up like the two numbers, this person has two numbers associated with them, that person has two numbers associated with them. So I'm gonna try to be very careful with my plot. So this would be like my X and my Y. So like, so one, one, two, two. All right, so like here, here. So this would be like the data point for person one. For person two, it's like here, here. Like that. And then for person three, it's like here, here. Like that. Okay. Now, what we would like to do is to use this data that we've collected to um, predict on patients that we haven't seen before. 
Okay. So what does that mean? Like, well, what if like um, we hear of a patient that has um, cholesterol level of like 1.5, what should we approximate their cholesterol to be? Right, even though we don't have a measurement of 1.5 in here, can we use this data to maybe predict what their cholesterol, I mean, what their blood pressure will be? One way to do that is to find a line that approximates the data. And this line is equal to, I'll call it y hat, because these are like little y's over here. This line is equal to a slope, which I'll call w, times x. So this is the slope of the line. There is no, we're not, being, we're not concerning ourselves with an intercept. We just imagining that the line passes through the origin, there is no plus b. This line is just going to be determined by w times x. And the choice of w is going to depend, is going to make this line go like this, right? So like, if w was 10, then the line would be like that, right? It'd be like way steep. And it wouldn't be approximating the data well, right? Visually speaking. If the W was like 0.1, then the line would look like this. So how do we find the best W? So that's the question at hand. How can we find the best quote unquote? slope w, right? Like, of course we could like manually pick one. Like <clears throat> if w was equal to one, I bet you it wouldn't be that bad off. In fact, I think the line I drew is actually w equals to one. But how, what, do we, what do you think the best weight is? I mean, the best slope, any guesses? Well, actually, do you understand the problem? Why would we want this line? Because if we had this line and we had a measurement of 1.5, which we don't have in our data set, right? We can reasonably expect, if we go out to 1.5 and go up here, that value right there, right there, 1.5, go up to our line, go up here, whatever that value is, is going to be a reasonable approximation of their blood pressure, right? So we're using this data to make predictions on measurements that we haven't seen before. Is the problem like clear? Like why we would want this, this line? Yes. Okay. And we understand also that the only thing that's determining this line is its slope, W. Right, like for different values of W, we'll be like this, <laughs> right? We just have to find the best W that fits that data the best. But what do we mean by best fit? Well, we can measure the performance of a given slope in the following way. With what's called a cost function. also referred to as a loss function, okay? Okay, so for a given slope, W, we measure its performance um, 
i.e. the performance of y hat. Okay? Like y hat is determined by the slope. So we put, we're measuring the performance of the model that we built, y hat, which is completely determined by the slope. So if we have a given slope, then we can measure the performance of y hat. Okay. Actually, I can rewrite it. We measure the performance of y hat, which is equal to the slope times x with the following formula. So the cost of a given w. Okay, this is a function of w now. Is equal to one half. I'm going to use summation notation now times the sum i is equal one to n of y hat minus y all squared. Now, what does this notation mean? Okay, so um, answer in the, like, just say out loud, have you ever seen that symbol before? Yes. yes. It, it means like we're, we're just adding up all of these things. So, um, for example, in our case right here, like it's just, oh, sorry. Um, I should say I there, I there. So where y hat i is equal to the slope times x i and y i is the label for x i. And so we have like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. So what is this cost function going to look like for our data here? So capital N is the number of points. So in our case, we have three. So for a given W, going to be equal to one half times the sum i is equal one to three of y hat i minus y all squared. Oh, sorry. Keep on doing that. Y i. So what is like, I can like literally write it all out for those points. So one half times um, y hat one minus y one all squared plus one half y hat two minus y two all squared plus one half y hat three minus y three all squared. There's only we only have three points. Okay. So y hat one, what is that equal to? That's equal to w times x one. Right? W times x one is equal to y hat one. And that's like our model. For a given W, we input an X, we get out a Y, predicted Y. Input X, get out Y. Input that X, we get out a Y. So, let's do one half 
So this is our first prediction. So it's um, zero. I'll just put the weight there. Weight. So slope times x. It's the same thing as x times slope, right? Doesn't matter. Order of operations. W times x is equal to x times w, right? So just for notational convenience, I'm going to do x times w instead of w times x. So x is 0 0.85 times w. So this right here, that's that guy right there. X1 times W gives me my white hat one. That's my X1. That's the data that we have. Okay. And then Y1 is the label for it. One point two. And that's all squared. Plus one half. So what's our our y hat two? It's well, it's x two times w, right? That's our x, our second x that we have. We multiply that times w. So one point three times w, and then our label was two point four. And then plus one half times what's our y hat three? Well, it's our third x times our our w. So one point eight times w, and then our label was two point one. In the York square. Okay, so this right here is the cost function for our our data. Right? It's the cost function for our data. And why is it the cost function? Well, think of it like this. What do we want? We want this line to be a close approximation to those data points, right? So if we feed in an X and multiply it times W, we get a Y out, an output, right? We want that Y that we get out to be close to this Y when X is right here, that Y when X is over here, this Y when X is right there. We want our output to look like the labels that we observed. Right, this is our predicted output. We want to measure those against the actual true labels. For example, like right there, eight, so 0 0.85 times W. If 0 0.85 times W equals 1.2, then our line nails that point right there. And this would be what? Zero, right? If this is equal to the output, that's zero. If 1.3 times W equals 2.4, then we nailed that point. And this term would be zero because that'd be 2.4 minus 2.4. If 1.8 times W equals 2.1, then this subtracts the zero, but that also means that we would hit that point. So the smaller this sum is, and notice that it's like a distance, it's like positive. We square it, right? That minus that, that's how far away they are when we square it in a sense. That times that minus that, how far is this from that? And we're squaring it, so we're making it a positive. So distances are positive, that's why we square it. We could use absolute values, but I use the square. How far away is this from that? That's what this term is telling us. And then we're kind of just dividing by a half to kind of scale it down. So if we're really far off, with our W, right? Like if 
we had a, 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 a W that did like this, right? That was our line, or like that was our line, <laughs> right? If our weight, if our slope was like way over there, then we'd be so far away from those points that this would be a big number, that would be a big number, that would be a big number. And when we add them all together, we have a big number. We want this cost function to be small because the smaller this, this sum is, the closer this is to that, that is to that, and that is to that. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. Right, so we can make very different choices of W and see how well it performs, right? Um, and what, but what's the best W, right? We want the best W, the W that's gonna be simultaneously close to that output, that output, and that output for those input Xs. Well, I said it a second ago, we want this to be small, right? We want that to be small. Right, so let me write out the cost function again in a general form. Okay, now it might help for us to like, like this is a function of W, but I don't see W anywhere. So I'm gonna rewrite it with W in there. So this is like XI, no, sorry. Oh no, I can do this. I can write like that. Like x1 times w minus y1 all squared plus one half x2 times w minus y2 squared plus dot 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 plus one half x n times w minus y n squared. And that's the same thing. Do you agree? I just expanded the sum. This is the first, first term, second term, plus dot, 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 plus the last term. Okay? Do you agree that that's the same thing? Yes. All right. And what do we want to do? We want to minimize this. Minimize over all slopes W. Oh, we know how to minimize differential functions, right? We can use gradient descent. We can make a guess at the slope, I mean, a guess at the appropriate W here, right? And then we can use gradient descent to find better and better Ws that minimize that function. What's more, this is a quadratic function. Notice all the terms are being squared. Like all the W's are being squared. Remember, it's important to remember the W is the variable for that function. So this is a quadratic, which means it's like a bowl, 
and we can find the actual optimal, true global optimal W with gradient descent. So that's what we need to do. If we can minimize this function and find a W, it minimizes this, that W corresponds to the best possible slope to approximate all that data. Okay. So how do we do it? Well, we need to find the derivative of this function. So we need to find C prime. Right. We need to find C prime of W. Okay. Well, this is actually very easy. So here's the hint. So like, okay, how are we going to do this? What's the derivative with respect to W of one half X one times W minus Y one squared. And again, X one and Y one are numbers. The variable here is W. What's this derivative? All of you should be able to do that derivative if you've been watching the videos. I need, need to like, give you another hint. What's this? What's the derivative here for this one? That's a three, it's a one. So what's the derivative for this thing here with respect to W? Any guesses? Okay, I think I Pause the recording. Okay, so um, after that, like quick refresher and, and the chain rule, um, we can see that if we treat this as our variable, then the derivative of the outside would be two times a half to the power of one. So the half would go away, and we're just left with the inside. And then the derivative of the inside with respect to W is just the coefficient of W, which is X1. Like that. So that derivative of the outside is there, derivative of the inside is there. They're just multiplying those together. So this was the derivative with respect to W of that very first term here. But the same kind of pattern holds for each of these other terms. Like, in general, like, I can just immediately say that the next term that we're going to add to, like, if we were applying the derivative as an operator across here, would be x2 times w minus y2 times x2. So, in general, we can write this out as saying that C prime of W is equal to the sum I is equal one to N of X I times W minus label times X I. And that's by just applying the chain rule on each of these pieces being added up, you'll get that. So that's the derivative. 
Okay. So now we can make it, we can do gradient descent. We can guess a W1. And then iterate W n plus one is equal to Wn minus alpha, which is the learning rate, number between zero and one times C prime of Wn. And see what happens. Okay, so uh, we just have to be careful in setting up our cost function and our derivative. So let's go ahead and pull this up in a Jupyter notebook now. Okay, so launch Jupyter. Let's go to my folder. Let's make a new one. I need to rename these, but it's gonna make a new one. Julia, all right. All right, so we're gonna be using maybe plots. Um, we also need our X data. So our X data is what? Um, 0 0.85, 1.3, 0.5, and 1.8 in our y data is equal to 1.2, 2.4, and 2.1. And if we want, we can plot the data just to look at it, plot x comma y, label equals observed data or something like that, run that cell. Oh, not plot, sorry, scatter, because <laughs> we're scattering the points. <clears throat> um, the X limbs look a little funny, so I'm gonna do the X limbs real fast. So X limbs, let's just say uh, zero to 2.5, maybe. And then maybe I'll add some Y limbs too. Type over y lens equals maybe zero to two point five. It's a little bit better. So that's our data. Um, maybe I'll expand it a little bit more and say like three point five or something. All right, there's our data. <clears throat> okay. So um, let's go ahead and write our cost function out. So I'll call it um, C maybe of W equals. All right, so I have it directly behind me. So I can say like 0.5 times 0 0.85 times W minus um, say uh, 1.2 all squared plus, and actually it might be easier to see like this is x1, this is y1, this is x2, y2, x3, y3. I could just do this. I could do x1 times w minus y1 like that. <clears throat> plus 0.5 times x2 times w minus y2 all squared plus 0.5 times x3 times w minus y3 all squared. And it's like one way that we could Define it since we already have our data, x and y. 
that's our function CW. And then we can look at maybe DC. So that's the derivative of C with respect to W. And that's equal to, well, to save time, I can just like take this line here and copy it, come down here and paste it, and then just get rid of the 0.5, get rid of the 0.2, and just put okay, x1 on the outside, because that's the chain rule. Derivative of the outside, 2 times 0.5. So that's, and then to the power one, so that'd be this. And then derivative of the inside with respect to W is X one. So I just gotta get rid of all that. So now here this would be X two, get rid of that. And then this would be X three. Okay. <clears throat> so um, we can say like, okay, All right, so these are functions. All right, so now we can say like, okay, um, what is the cost of um, having a slope of 10.0? That's the cost of, of slope of 10.0. So if I scatter that and then I try to plot. <laughs> um, so, Let's just say um, plot on top of the scatter, x goes to um, x times uh, 10.0. So you can see that at, like with slope 10, the line doesn't really hit, every, hit anything well. But what about if, like if we look at a, a slope of like um, point one? All right, so look at the cost of a slope of point one. The cost is smaller, right? So does point one do a better job at approximating the data? Well, let's see. So I'm just going to plot again. But now instead of x times ten, it'll be x times point one. And this will be. I'll give it a label so we can see. W equals to 0.1. And I'll do the same here. Label W equals to 10.0. So <clears throat> it's hard to tell, but like, okay, um, this had a smaller cost, but it's still not like doing well. <laughs> so how do we find the best one? Well, we have <clears throat> the derivative here. So what we can do is make a guess. So um, W equals to, um, let's make a guess of like um, 10.0 maybe. And make alpha equals to like 0 0.25. Might have to be very small alpha. And then, um, so uh, let's see, what did we do last time? We had a counter and we had a while loop. So while the absolute value of DC of W end, that's the very last weight that, or slope that we're considering. While well, that's greater than um, 0.1, And so this is the double ampersand. Um, I is less than a thousand. Um, w new is equal to W end minus alpha times D C of W end, like that. So that's gradient descent. And then we're going to push that into W, exclamation mark. Push into W, W new. So that's going to be the new thing that's at the end of W. So we're making one and we're putting it in there. And then we increment I by one. And it's like a counter. I don't want to go more than a thousand times. And then end. Okay. 
it went 42 times. Okay. So, all right. Um, what's the final slope that it found? It's the last one, right? So, if I grab this code here, so this is gradient descent. So now I'm going to plot the optimal W that we found. X goes to X times W end. The last one we found, label optimal found. There. So you can see that line splits that data perfectly. It even like looks like it hits that point, All right? Compared to the W up here and the W down there. Um, in fact, um, like you can see that each of these are getting closer and closer and closer. So we start at 10, eight, seven, we're all converging to this slope here. And that's the best slope because that's the one that minimizes the cost function. It minimizes the, it's like the cost function, the higher it is, it's like we, we're, in, we're gaining more penalty for having a bad W. In fact, let me just see what happens. Okay, so let's look at the cost. So for um, slope in W, uh, print line, um, put this in a, a string. So uh, I can use this money sign here and then get the slope. So that's, this just converts that number to a string and has cost. And then I need another conversion to the cost function of slope. So you can see 10, slope 10, well, maybe I'll, I'll do it like this. Slope equals to 10, cost equals to that, okay. So slope 10 had cost 209, slope eight had, you can see the cost function is going down. You can see the cost function is going down. Okay, so now we can make predictions. So since we have our, our, our slope, we can have like a, a predictor function. So, so like, um, what was it? Uh, um, input measurements. And then this is gonna be equal to W, end times input measurement. So we only had these three points of data. Um, let's see what we predict for 1.5. So, okay. 1.5. So 2.12 is what we would expect to be to 2.12 roughly what um, blood pressure would be for this given cholesterol level or whatever. Okay, so I think this is a good place to um, stop the recording and um, I'll take some questions.